Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. I'm going to go over the Stronger is Not Bigger video in 5 to 10 minutes. So probably less, all right? So bear with me here. So again, strength does not lead to size. Stronger is not bigger. This is one of the topics that frustrate me the most. It's a myth. It's been debunked years ago. In fact, I made a video about this back in 2013. And since then, a lot of studies came out to back up my claim. And this is not something I made up. This is something I just learned from observation. And from just studying muscle growth my whole fucking life, right? So now I'm going to show you guys the studies behind it. Ten proofs. Ten scientific proofs. All, all of this is going to be prove the fuck vent, right? So there's no opinion here. Just straight facts, right? We're going to go over five basic things. Number one, training experience leads to strength. That's what people don't understand is that the longer you've been training, the stronger you will be, right? Because strength is mainly it's a skill. It's something that you learn from doing something over and over again. Second thing is size leads to strength. The bigger you are, the stronger you are. That's why fat people are stronger than skinny people. They don't have to lift the fucking weight. If you stop training and you put on 100 pounds from just fat, just eating caloric surplus, and you go back to training, you will be stronger, right? Size leads to strength. False is massive acceleration, right? Third thing is the reason why big natties are strong is because of number one and number two, right? Big natty, a lot of people say, well, the the the, the bigger natties are the stronger natties. Well, the reason why big natties are strong is because one, they've been training for a long time, and two, they have that size, which helps them become stronger. So people actually have it backwards. Stronger is not bigger, bigger is stronger. Right? And the fourth thing is progressive overload. We're gonna go with progressive overload. A lot of people misapply progressive overload. It's the result of training. It's the result of hypertrophy. It's not the cause. As you get uh, more advanced in your training, you'll be able to progressively overload. Right? So you don't you don't force it. It just happens from training and from lifting. That's why you're curling a heavier uh, weight than you were curling two, three years ago. It's because your body has adapted. Right? And finally, there are multiple ways of progressive overload. So I'm gonna go over that. Uh, as quick as possible. Bodybuilder of the day is obviously my man Dexter Jackson. Love him. One of, the, one of my favorite bodybuilders of all time. So anyway, next. Uh, high man size principle. Number one reason why stronger is not bigger. Obviously, you guys know you have slow and fast twitch muscle fibers. The ones that you want to focus on for hypertrophy is obviously the fast twitch ones, right? The high threshold motor units are the ones that are going to recruit the, the fibers that grow the most. Well, how do you recruit them? Well, two ways, right? You could lift heavier shit, right? You could lift heavy weights or you could fatigue the slow twitch muscle. See, when you fatigue your slow twitch muscle, your body automatically has to start recruiting the fast twitch ones, the high threshold ones. So that's why you could either lift heavy weights or you could do high reps close to failure. And that's going to cause the recruitment of those muscle fibers. That's why you could build muscles. You could build muscles doing moderate weight. Examples, gymnasts, calisthenics, push-ups, people doing high rep push-ups and building great chests. Prison workouts, blood flow restriction training, sports, you know, the nucleus overload examples, right? Second proof, protein synthesis peaks at 60 to 75% of your one rep max, meaning once you start lifting heavier than that, you don't get a statistically significant increase in protein synthesis, right? So if stronger men bigger, then once you start going to 80, 90, 95% of your one rep max, you will see more muscle growth, but that's not the case. That's not the case with muscle growth. That's not the case with protein synthesis, which is what muscle building is, right? And there goes two studies here. And there, there are so many studies on this, guys. I just I just picked two, you know, two of the most concise ones, but there are so many studies on this. Train man, natties, you name it, right? Look at the first one. Now the load, no systemic hormones, blah, 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 determine strength gains in train men. They've, guys, this is not new. This has been studied for years. That's why I hate when people try to debate this topic, right? The second one, resistance exercise load does not determine uh, uh, strength gains, I mean, hypertrophy gains in young men. There are so many. They went as low as 30% of your one rep max to as high as 80 and 90% of your one rep max. And the results are the same over and over again. The heavier you lift, the more strength you gain. But you do not make more muscle gains than the ones who are lifting a lighter load but are going close to failure. Next reason, strength and detraining. Studies have shown over and over again that if a person completely stops lifting, meaning say, say, let's say you used to train with high volume or even normal volume, and you stop training, but you just go in, you go to the gym once a week or, and you just focus on your, on your one rep max, you will retain that strength. You're going to retain your strength, but you're going to lose a ton of muscle gains. And this has been shown in the lab over and over again. So you can actually maintain your strength. You can maintain, a, I don't know, you know 300 pound, 400 pound bench and lose size. And a stronger man bigger, then that means if you can maintain that strength, you, you will also maintain the muscle size, which is not the case. And that's shown here. The weak correlation 
between change in muscle size and strength. All right? Next, obviously, blood flow restriction training, right? Katsu. I mentioned that a lot in my videos where they're building muscle using 20 to 30 percent of their one rep max, which is extremely lightweight. And guys, blood flow restriction training is probably the most researched topic in the fitness community, in in uh, in the hypertrophy world, right? Because they you know they're trying to use it on old people and people that are sick and can't go heavy, whatever. And they are making just as much muscle, and in some studies even more muscle than people who are lifting heavy, right? And the reason behind that is again, you don't you don't have to literally restrict blood flow, but the reason behind it is because again the high mass size principle. When you're doing blood flow restriction training, you're fatiguing the slow twitch muscles, so your body's kicking into higher gear and recruiting the high threshold ones. And this study here, and I want to put the links in the, in the description. This study here was done on trained powerlifters. I don't want to hear, oh, uh, maybe they were newbies. No, they, they've done blood flow restriction training on every type of, the, of population you could think about, right? They've done it on trained men, untrained women, old people, powerlifters, you name it. And it's the same results. If stronger men, bigger, blood flow restriction will not work because you are lifting bitch weights in blood flow restriction. In fact, a lot of people actually have to lower their, their, um, their strength. To be able to, because when, when you switch from heavy lifting to blood flow restriction, your strength obviously goes down at first because, you know, again, strength is a skill. If you stop lifting heavy, you, you know, you're, you're obviously not going to go back to the gym and be able to uh, uh, you use that same way. But the high pressure free gains come on, even though the strength went down. Inverse direction. Next, strength is neural. Neural adaptations is really what makes you stronger. Increase in firing rate, right? Increase in fiber recruitment. Right or like I mentioned in another video, cross education. Did you guys know? You know, cross people forget about cross education. You know, meaning if you curl a, a fucking dumbbell with your right arm long enough, eventually your left arm actually gets stronger without even touching a weight. Yeah, it doesn't increase in size. So this is another example where you get stronger on that left arm without gaining size. Right again, strength is mainly a new adaptation from experience, time, practice, practicing something over and over again. That's so you can see people who are strong as shit and don't even look like they lift. Right. Next, volume versus intensity cut in half. Again, I explained that you could cut intensity in half. So many studies have shown that you could cut intensity in half. So you could go from eighty percent of your one rep max to forty percent of your one rep max. You could go from lifting ten rep max to three rep max. Right and see the same size gains. That is insane. Meanwhile, if you try to cut volume in half from let's say five to six sets to one or two sets, the drop in protein synthesis and the drop in muscle size is statistically significant. Right. So the two are not even equal. It's not even close. Yes, you need volume. Yes, you need intensity. But for to say that volume and intensity have the same level of importance or worse, that intensity is more important than volume is 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 complete bullshit. Because again, you could cut intensity in half and still make tremendous gains. Meanwhile, if you cut volume in half from the optimal range to so half of that, you lose so much size gains, right? And again, I've, I've showed the graph from my, from my previous videos. So many studies showing that. So many. Again, this is not even up for debate, guys. Next, powerlifters and Olympic lifters, right? They will tell you, for example, I use the Johnny Jackson example where he has a, up to an 800-pound squat, but one of his weakest body parts was his legs. This is one of the strongest bodybuilders of all time, up there with Ronnie Coleman and Berto Fox. But for years, what kept him from scoring higher was his legs. And guess what he kept doing? Squatting heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier. They didn't work. Eventually, you know, during his last years, what did he do? He started scaling back on the weight, focusing more on volume, high repetitions, and his legs blew the fuck up. Eventually, he wanted to show so late in his career. And I was so mad because you guys know I love Johnny Jackson. And I was like, why did it take him so long to figure that out? You know? So, guys, you got to put your ego down. Right? Same thing, Olympic lifters, look at the size of the legs. Which, don't get me wrong, they have big quads, right? But they also do volume work, right? And also, their legs, look at the size of the legs relative to their strength. If stronger men, bigger, Olympic lifters will have legs the size of whales. Right? And these guys have great genetics, so I don't want to fucking hear anything about genetics. They have great genetics. A lot of them are on performance-enhancing drugs, right? And even Olympic uh, lifting coaches will tell you that when they're trying to increase the, the, the size of their, um, their quads or their... Uh, the, the, the torso or whatever to obviously help with moving more weight. You know what they do? They lower the fucking weight and they start doing high volume blocks. So if stronger men bigger and an Olympic lifter whose job it is to be as strong as fucking possible, if stronger men bigger and they wanted to get bigger and they wanted to increase the muscle size, what would they do? They would say, hey, let's just lift more weight, right? Nope. They reduce the size and they do more volume instead, which clearly tells you that volume is more important than intensity. Stronger is not bigger.
right? And again, I mentioned the Tom Plax example a million times. You know, this is a guy who people forget that Tom Plax actually trained with Olympic lifters. He learned a lot of his techniques from Olymp from Olympic lifters. And he'll be the first to tell you that, yes, he was squatting heavy as shit, but he did not start seeing ridiculous gains until he started doing more volume. And this is somebody who loves to squat heavy. Yeah, of course, there are other things, fact there's, there's other factors involved, like steroids and stuff like that. But again, steroids just enhance, you know, your natural potential. So if anything, you know, people on steroids would just, you know, if stronger man bigger, they would just lift super fucking heavy and get even bigger, right? But no, that's not the case, right? Uh, it's already 10 minutes into this fucking video. Oh, well. Next, old people. Again, you could double the intensity and see no growth. Studies have shown this. You could take, because I don't know if you guys are not aware, but obviously old people have a hard time putting on muscle size, right? They have a blunted response, almost like train, train uh, lifters. But what they found out is that if you double the intensity, if you just make them lift heavier, they still have a blunted response, right? Protein synthesis doesn't go up as much. They still don't put on muscle mass. But when you double the volume, boom, the growth comes back, right? So if they go from 40% to 75% or 80% of one right max, still no gains. When they go from three sets to six sets, finally, protein synthesis kicks in and it starts seeing hypertrophy, which is another proof that stronger does not mean bigger, All right? Next, drop sets. I made a ton of video about drop sets, so I'm going to keep this part short. So many studies have shown that drop sets give you the same muscle size as regular standard sets. In some studies, even more. But guess what? The group that does regular training actually puts on more strength. And that makes sense, right? When you're doing a drop set, you're actually going from a, a, a heavier weight to a lighter weight. So, of course, you're not going to put on as much strength as the person who's just doing three hard sets of a heavy weight, right? But at the end, guess what? Superior muscle gains, and in some some studies, equal muscle gains. If stronger meant bigger, then the group who just did heavy lifting would destroy the group who did drop sets in every study, and that's not the case. And there's a ton of studies on that. You guys can look it up, right? Again, protein synthesis before strength. I mentioned that several times. Your body begins the protein synthesis response immediately after training, whereas strength can take days, weeks, or even months to grow. So stronger man bigger, then your body will not start protein synthesis until you fucking got stronger. It's common fucking sense. It blows my mind how people are just clueless about this. If stronger man bigger, your body will say, you know what? The workout you did today was not as heavy as the last one, so we're not going to turn on protein synthesis. We're going to wait a few days, a few weeks, a few months until you're stronger before we start protein synthesis. And that's clearly not the case. Your body starts that adaptive response, starts building muscle right after your workout, regardless of where you were lifting, heavy or not. So conclusion, stronger is not bigger, right? Strength comes from experience and size. Big natties are strong because, again, they've been training longer. And, it, of course, they're bigger, right? They're bigger, and that's exactly why they're strong. People have it backwards. Next, progressive overload is a natural process. It's a byproduct, right? It comes... Literally, from training longer and from growing bigger. Next, progressive overload is not just weight. More time on the tension. You could do more reps, more sets, more frequency, shorter rest periods, right? Drop sets, rest balls, whatever, right? And there are a lot of benefits. And also, I got to mention this because last time I made a video on that, people started hating on my man, Alex from Alpha Destiny. And I, I have no clue why. Because I went back and watched a three-hour interview from years ago. And Alex clearly stated that he believes in progressive overload, meaning either more weight or more reps with the same weight. And guys, keep in mind, again, go back and watch the interview. Alex has a calisthenic background, so he knows the power of push-ups and pull-ups and all these things, those high rep workouts, all right? So don't confuse his teachings with just, uh, you know, heavy weight, heavy weight. No, if that's the case, he wouldn't have, like he said in interview, he wouldn't have a volume day and an intensity day. He would just have an intensity day and an intensity day. Right? Why do you think he has a volume? Because he knows the importance of volume and high repetitions. He just tries to progressively overload on those aspects. So either more weight or more reps. So stop hating my man. I fucking hate that. Next, moderate weight benefits, shorter workouts, less risk of injury, easier recovery, and you can accumulate more weekly volume when you're doing more moderate weights. If you do super heavy weights all the time, trust me, recovery is going to be a, you know, a fucking burden. All right, so guys, focus on hard sets, meaning close to failure, not to absolute failure, but close to failure, and focus on high weekly volume, which is pretty much the nucleus overload principles, right? Frequency. All right, hope this video helps, guys. Do this now. Like the video. Let's get this shit to like a thousand likes. YouTube always demonetizes my shit because I curse so much, and I really don't care. So like the video, subscribe to my shit, hit the bell, email me for coaching, HSP training programs, or meal plans. I'm out of here.